This is an ABC News special report. Good evening, I'm Juju Chang at ABC News headquarters and we're coming on the air with the first pictures of former American prisoners returning to U.S. soil after being held in Russia. You see Paul Whelan there shaking the hands with President Biden. He was wrongly imprisoned in Russia for years. His family members there to greet him along with Vice President Kamala Harris. You see him shaking her hand. They are part of the welcoming committee at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. The motorcade arrived a short time ago. There is a group of about 20 friends and family members greeting this plane. You see Paul Whelan looking into the eyes of Vice President Kamala Harris, talking about this landing. As you know, this is completing the historic multinational prisoner exchange between the US, Russia, and four other countries. You see Paul Whelan hugging the president and now the vice president. That plane which you see there on the tarmac carrying Paul Whelan, as well as journalist Evan Gerskovich, who works for the Wall Street Journal. Paul Whelan now hugging family members. You hear a buzz cheering. There's the Wall Street Journal reporter. That's Paul Whelan's sister greeting him on the tarmac. We just saw Evan Gerskovich hug Kamala Harris, shaking the president's hand, giving him an embrace as well. He was in prison for 491 days. And I want to go now to Jay O'Brien, who's there on the tarmac. Jay, paint a picture for us of this emotional homecoming. Clearly, there are friends, relatives, and colleagues at the Wall Street Journal there to greet Evan. Jay? Juju, a silence fell over the press and the others here as you saw that plane coming in. It was the only plane in the sky. It was the only light in the sky. And then as Paul Whelan stepped off the aircraft, it was only fitting. He is the one of these three detainees who had been imprisoned in Russia the longest. He stepped off the aircraft just behind me, and this moment is still playing out. He hugged President Biden. He hugged Vice President Harris. And then he went to his sister. This cheer that just erupted, you might be able to hear it, Juju, that is from, oh, he's picking her up. That is Evan Gershkovich picking up what I believe to be his sister, or no, his mother, his mother, Ella. His mother, Ella, the Wall Street Journal has put out a, a long piece that details everything that she went through, specifically his father as well. She was buttonholing diplomats at dinners by herself. She was a one-woman negotiating machine. She went to Russia with his father. She met, the Wall Street Journal reports, with his interrogators in Russia. She fought tirelessly to bring her son home, and the image you just saw was him pick her up in joy. It's quite emotional, Jay. Family. What we're now seeing is President Biden greeting the Russian-American journalist Alsu Kumarsheva, she has just descended from the stairs, is now talking to the Vice President, Kamala Harris, uh, presumably talking about this long journey to freedom. They are being met by family members, encouraged to do so as she runs across to greet her family. It's an emotional scene on the tarmac at Joint Base Andrews. Jay, I know that you started talking about the diplomatic efforts, but also the quiet efforts and the not so quiet efforts of family members to keep their loved ones in the news and to keep their imprisonment a priority for this administration. And the strength it took to do that and endure what these families have gone through. Just very quickly, Juju, you see still Alsu Kermasheva hugging her family, her daughter there in the gray shirt. Her daughter turns 13 years old tomorrow. Her daughter, Miriam, she was the one that President Biden sang happy birthday to at that event earlier today. An emotionally fraught experience for them. You see Elizabeth Whelan on the tarmac behind me as well. She is Paul Whelan's sister. President Biden joked earlier to your point about families demonstrating strength, that she practically lived in the Oval Office for the past few years, the near six years that Paul Whelan has been imprisoned, trying to advocate for her brother's release. I talked to a source close to these negotiations who said that Elizabeth Whelan was a pit bull, constantly holding this administration and other administrations to account, advocating for her brother and doing it all while undergoing the tumult of her brother not being here.
And you can see her laughing out loud, smiles all around. Paul Whelan now talking again to the vice president, shaking her hand. Uh, I want to bring in um, Selena Wang, who is at the White House. And Selena, I, I just want to, as we're seeing these pictures of an emotional reunion, it looks as though the president is speaking. Let's see if we can listen in. You said earlier that all these negotiations require a tough call. What was the toughest call on this one? No, 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 no. The toughest call on this one for other countries is I asked them to do some things that were against their immediate self-interest and uh, really very difficult for them to do, particularly Germany and Slovenia. Slovenia came in at the last minute and, and I tell you what, the, uh, the chancellor was incredible. He was incredible. So, what's your message to other countries that may think that Thank you very much. Hey, look, that's been the case for all of history. <laughs> My job is to make sure, number one, they don't get them. If they do, we get them back. I don't buy this idea that you're not going to let, let these people rot in jail because other people may be captured. We're going to set out all the notifications to all the other countries, all our citizens, what countries not to go to, what to do, what not to do, and they got to pay attention. they got more work to do. So. This is an extraordinary day, and um, I'm very thankful for our president and what he has done over his entire career, but in particular as it relates to these families and these individuals what he has been able to do to bring the allies together on many issues, but in particular this one. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. This is an incredible day. And, um, you can see it in the families and their eyes and in their crimes. A while ago. We got to make sure we want to make sure everything was in place. And uh, Slovenia made, uh, made the right move at the right time. So anyway, look, it's, it's time to trust. It's, I mean, really, I mean it. I know everybody thinks I talk about the notion of relationships with foreign policy with other same. countries. Much of it, and you've heard me kid with Barack, kid me, all politics is personal. It matters. Other leaders trust you, you trust them, you get things done. And that's how this got done. A lot of, a lot of help. Anyway, thank you. How worried are you? An impromptu press conference with Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris uh, receiving the former hostages, former prisoners rather, from Russia. Uh, Kamala Harris calling it an extraordinary day and thanking the presidents for his diplomacy. Uh, Joe Biden calling it a matter of trust, saying he is delighted that they're home. I want to bring in Selena Wang, who's at the White House. Selena, take us behind the scenes to this very complicated set of negotiations that took place for months, if not years. Juju, just watching President Biden and Vice President Harris speak there, I'm just struck by the relief and the joy that they feel because behind the scenes, this has been years of painstaking negotiations and diplomacy to achieve the largest and most complex prisoner swap since the Cold War. President Biden himself has been intimately involved in these negotiations, and you heard him there praising the Prime Minister of Slovenia. In fact, the very day that President Biden announced he was going to drop out of this presidential race on July 24th, first when he was still in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, recovering from COVID, he was actually on the phone with the Prime Minister of Slovenia trying to secure this deal. And so for this moment, this is going to be a critical part of President Biden's legacy as well as Vice President Harris's legacy, both of them praising their allies because this was such a difficult thing, not only for the U.S. to execute, but for all of these other countries to do together.
Selena, I don't want to interrupt you, but there's Evan walking over to uh, a crowd of people, presumably friends, colleagues from the Wall Street Journal. I want to bring in Jay O'Brien again. Jay, give us a sense of what you're hearing and seeing and what you know to be those visitors who are giving him bear hugs now. Yeah, Juju, so this is uh, about a dozen or so reporters from the Wall Street Journal, some of whom senior executives, some of whom friends and colleagues of Ezra Gershkovich who came here. We heard from Wall Street Journal reporters who said some of them were here to cover this event, just like any other news event. They are reporters, just like Evan is, and then some just came here to greet their friend. And we hear Evan Gershkovich speaking to that gaggle of reporters down there as well. Uh, another thing to note, as we talk about some of the color here at Joint Base Andrew, as this plane has landed. Earlier, before he walked over there, Evan Gershkovich was standing with Paul Whelan, and their families were talking, two families who, unlike most other families in this country understand what each other went through. And then there's one more thing to know here that just underscores how emotional this is. So we talked about Miriam, who is Alsu Kermasheva's youngest daughter. Her 13th birthday is tomorrow. I I'm looking at her now. You may not be able to see her in the camera shot. She has not let her mother go since she stepped off that aircraft, Juju. That's a beautiful note. Thanks for sharing that with us. Selena, I want to bring you back in on this. Um, the president mentioned his allies and how they had to make the toughest calls, specifically Slovenia, but also Germany, because they were holding prisoners, uh, including a hitman who had been convicted of murder. Yeah, Germany was absolutely critical here because key to making the swap happen was Russia insisting that someone be released was Vadim Krasikov. He is a convicted murderer, but he was being held in Germany. President Biden had to personally plea the chancellor of Germany to make this swap happen. This for the president underscores the importance of American leadership, of American diplomacy and American allies. Earlier today, he took a veiled swipe at Donald Trump saying allies are critical and key. Uh, another theme that Kamala Harris doubled down on here at in Maryland on the tarmac. I want to bring in Patrick Rival, who for years has lived and worked in Russia for ABC News, um, knows Evan Gerskovich. Uh, I, I just want to get your reactions, Patrick, to seeing your former counterpart colleague step onto the tar tarmac to freedom. Hi, Juju. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a pretty incredible thing to see, um, to see Evan step off that plane and, uh, and meet his family and hug his family. Excuse me, sorry. I, I can hear the emotion uh, in your voice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, I think it should be said, Evan was very well known to, uh, to everyone who worked in Moscow. He's a, he was known as a brilliant, a very brilliant uh, correspondent. And also just a very good, very good person. He's incredibly popular, you know. He was known as a deeply committed correspondent. I was just watching him there uh, go over and and, uh, and see our colleagues there at, on the side. And one of, one of our colleagues there is Andrew Roth of The Guardian, who's a close friend of Evan, who, who now works in D.C. Um, and who used to work in Moscow until recently. He, and to see them reunited also was just was incredible to see. Um, but you know, Evan, as I say, was a, was a deeply committed reporter and most foreign reporters left Russia after the invasion of Ukraine. But Evan chose to keep going back because he believed it was crucially important at this time that people understand what Russia is thinking, what Russia wants in this time of, of an immense standoff between the West and Russia. And he paid a very difficult, a terrible and unjust price for that. And so to see him free now, see him with his family who've gone through so much, I think it's also important to say that his, his friends as well have mounted this extraordinary campaign to, to try and keep attention on Evan. Um, most of his friends, most of his closest friends are Moscow correspondents and they were trying very, very hard to keep attention on his case, but also to support him. They've translated thousands of letters that were written to him um, and sent them to prison while he was there. So this is an extraordinary, just an extraordinary thing to see, Juju. It is indeed extraordinary. Patrick, we're going to try to listen in again to the president who home, seems to be talking. Okay. You said, sir, that family is everything earlier today. What has it meant to be with the family all day today as they are now finally reunited with their loved ones? You can appreciate, look, anyone who's lost family or worried about whether family would come home, whatever the circumstance was, has to understand the extreme. You've heard me say it before. My dad used to say family is the beginning. 
about who we are. It's about who we are as a country. What is your message tonight to Vladimir Putin? Stop. What's your message stop, to the stop, Americans? Stop, 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 the American people are watching this stop, broadcast sir? tonight, and I think it's fair to say they're celebrating with the families. What's your message to the American people? There's nothing beyond our capacity to react together. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Remember who the hell we are. We're the United States of America. The United States of America. We put back together with relationships with countries that we haven't had before. We built NATO. We rebuilt the circumstances that allowed this to happen. That's why it happens. Mr. President, should American journalists ever feel afraid about reporting abroad? I think, look, no matter where you are, there's certain places that you're going to be afraid. I mean, I'm, 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 the idea you're never going to be afraid. You'd never show up anywhere in, in the Middle East. You wouldn't show up anywhere in Russia. You wouldn't show up anywhere. It matters. It matters to be aware of what you're going into and not to take undue chances because it's going to because I'm going to come get you. Of your many you, achievements, where does this rank among your many achievements as president? Well, look, this is, to me, this is about the essence of who we are as a country. It really is about personal relationships. It's about family. It's about being able to have access to your own, the people you love and you adore. Imagine how you'd all feel if you had, you were being held captive unfairly, and you have children waiting home for you. Imagine how you feel. How many of you have children? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay? Imagine you being sitting in a prison, not knowing you'll ever get home, and wondering what's going on with your children. How they go to bed at night crying. How they ache every night, every day, and crying. It matters. Hours before you announced that you were going to be uh, leaving the 2024 race, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, how important it was for you to get this deal done, uh, knowing that you were not going to seek a second term? Was it very important? I still get it done even if I was seeking a second term. Not me. I'm still already, you're stuck with me as president for a while, kid. There's no way out, okay? You got me for at least another 100 or 90 days or so. So it, it, it did not even do with that. It had to do with the opportunity and trying to convince one last country to say, okay, they'll step up. Mr. Look, President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, this will now be cemented as a part of your one-term uh, legacy. How are you thinking about the rest of your time in office? How are well, you? Oh, we can talk about that another. Mr. President, Chancellor Schultz's commitment to getting this deal across the finish line. Could it have been possible without that agreement no. that you made? Thank you. Mr. President, Madam Vice President, Madam Vice President, your reaction is nice. And you said it It's a very good night, and it's testament to the work that we prioritize under Joe Biden's leadership in our administration, which is the importance of building alliances, building the strength that we have through diplomacy to have outcomes like this. And there's so much at stake right now in our country and in this upcoming election, including who has which approach to understanding America's strength. This is an example of the strength of American leadership in bringing nations together to deliver Kamala Harris on the tarmac. You're watching Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on the tarmac at Joint Base Andrews. An extraordinary scene. Selena Wang, I want to bring you in from the White House because this is quite unusual. Joe Biden taking at least a half dozen questions by my count, um, talking about his legacy, talking about this negotiation, talking about the hostages coming home, uh, that this is about who we are as a country. I've traveled a lot with the president. I can say, Juju, it is rare to see the president take that many questions from the press. It was almost like a mini press conference there. He was speaking off the cuff. He was praising allies. He's taking a full-on victory lap here after something he's worked on for months, for years. The president making very clear that his message to Russia is simply to stop to stop. The president making very clear that this could not have been done without American leadership and diplomacy. We also heard the vice president praising the president there as well. But again, Juju, as you say, this is quite a rare and extraordinary scene here. He is clearly joyful, celebratory, and relieved that this came together.
Selena Wang, thank you. Uh, I want to also bring in Jay O'Brien. Uh, we see Evan still shaking hands, still talking to the press line. Uh, it seems as though he's doing both the work of what journalists need, is the information, but also really reconnecting with some of his colleagues. Jay, paint a picture for us. He is, and a cheer went up here multiple times every time Evan Gershkovich showed his face because there was such a contingent of Wall Street Journal staff here. There were cheers even while President Biden was speaking just moments ago, as you recap with Selena, talking about his legacy, talking about how large this event looms in his legacy. And I can tell you, as President Biden was speaking, talking about painting a scene, I was standing here, he was standing right here below me, speaking with myself and other reporters. And you could see the joy on his face. You could see the happiness on his face. You could see that this is something that he wanted to push over the goal line, as Selena and others have reported that he has. And the vice president said as much as well. This is clearly a moment for them of both praising our allies and the work that was done to get this deal done, but also praising the work that this administration did in trying to get this together. The tireless work that both the president's most senior aides, like Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor did and the president himself as selena noted on that call on his own just hours before he put out that statement saying that he was not running for re-election jay o'brien thank you uh for all of the color from the tarmac i want to bring in patrick Reval one last time patrick you saw him shaking hands hugging people talking to members of the press as well as clearly friends and colleagues give me a sense of you know this is a, a man who's faced uh, by the state department's own designation wrongful detention in Russia. What's it like seeing him uh, smile and walk across the tarmac like that? Yeah, it's, it's incredible to see, right? I think and everyone there feels it. I think you can see President Biden feels it. It's just remarkable to feel that this is finally becoming real. I think, you know, people all day, there was a very tense wait for the families around this hostage exchange because even though when it became public that it was taking place, in fact, it was still ongoing. You know, the planes were on the tarmac in Turkey and many, many people and, you know, people I've been talking to have been saying they didn't dare truly believe that it had happened until they saw the photos of Evan. But I think, I mean, speaking personally, seeing him walk off the plane, seeing Paul Whelan walk off the plane, that's when it really becomes real when you see them meet up with their families. I think also you know, it should be said about Paul Whelan that this has been such an incredibly long, appalling ordeal for his family. We see his sister there who has had to take on this huge burden of trying to lobby the US government and also the Russian government to try and release her brother for years, for over five years. I remember speaking to Paul Whelan um, when he was in a prison camp in Russia back in 2020. He described the conditions there to me as Dickensian. He said, though, that he had, he'd managed to befriend some of the Russian prisoners there. He said the guards called him tourist because they all thought it was ludicrous that he was there. They were amused that this, this American had somehow found himself in this Russian prison camp. And so for these families, for this to finally be over is extraordinary. Of course, now the question is, um, what comes next? They all have to adapt to this new reality, adapt to being back in normal life. We know that Paul Whelan, his brother, has told us um, that he will be getting some government support. He, he will take up the offer to go to this military base where, uh, as in previous hostage um, cases, counsellors with, with expertise in dealing with people held in long-term detention will assist him. That's being offered to all of the people being brought back. We don't know yet how many of them will take, take up that offer. But there is now, of course, this, this long road ahead of trying to adjust just to normal life, Juju. Patrick Greville, thank you so much for your perspective, for your insights, and for your years of reporting on this story and, and from Russia. Patrick, thank you. Uh, I also want to thank Jay O'Brien uh, and Selena Wang from the White House. Thank you as we watch the three prisoners return to American soil. Of course, we're going to return you now to regular programming. Our coverage will continue on ABC News Live and abcnews.com. We'll have a complete wrap-up, of course, coming up on Nightline. I'm Juju Chang in New York. Good night. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.